can you introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Alana Williams. I am a student at Florida Morgan University. I'm a senior and graduating senior, and I major in law government and minor in Spanish. Fantastic. And when and where did you study abroad? I studied abroad summer, last summer, so summer 16, in Cuba, in Havana, Cuba. Nice. And how long were you there for? Uh, four weeks. Great. And why did you decide to study abroad? I've always wanted to study abroad. Um, growing up, me and my family would always take vacations to like other countries. So, and I would always think that it was too short of a trip and I wanted to stay longer. So studying abroad was a way for me to do that. And I wanted to get better at Spanish so I need to be immersed in the culture where they only speak Spanish in my class. Great. And were finances a concern for you? And if they were, how did you afford to study abroad in the summer? Yes, so they were. Um, I had to end up taking out loans because I couldn't afford it. And um, I had to only do one session because I wouldn't be able to take out like that much of a loan. So, but for spending money wise, I you know, had a job. So I just saved up money over the months because I knew I was going probably like February or March, I knew I was gonna go. So I like saved up money from paychecks to be able to afford uh, spending money and living expenses and stuff. And then I just took out a loan to pay for the program. Great. Um, can you tell us if while you were abroad, have you experienced any discrimination? Or did you feel you were treated any differently because of how you identify? No, not really. Um, with Cuba, it's way more integrated than the US. So it's not weird to see black people walking around <laughs> like it is here in certain neighborhoods. So and you just, People just don't really um, kind of double take unless they hear you talking. So most people thought that I was Cuban first. And then when I started talking or if I was with the other people in the study abroad group who were, looked more American, then they would assume that I was American. And then they would like try to come up to you and talk to you like, hey, and stuff like that. But it wasn't nothing negative, really. Great. So did you feel like you had a support system or people you could express your concerns to if you had any while you were over abroad? Um, yeah, the study abroad director, she was amazing. She would um, always um, like, keep us in contact with us because we had, we couldn't use our phones because it's a communist country, so U.S. phones don't work in Cuba, so you'd have to have um, a SIMS card, a Cuban SIMS card, so you, the program you paid for basically on a little old cell phone from like that you would probably use in like 2006, didn't even have, wasn't even a flip phone, it was just like the block phone. And she would always text us about like activities or we were always welcome to come to her house or like the study center, which is basically where, where it was where she lived. Um, and it was very accessible, really. She would always let us know like anytime we got a visit, you could call her. My host parents were always helpful, even though they didn't speak any English, I still knew that they would help me if I never, if, if I ever needed help. And it was, yeah, I felt like I had a good support system Nice, that's really good to hear. Um, last question is, if you can provide any advice for a student who's a little bit concerned about going abroad, maybe uh, they've never been out of the country, maybe they're first generation, or um, just have some concerns about finances, what would be your last, uh, or your, your final piece of advice for a student who is kind of concerned about studying abroad? I'd say just go, just do it, because I'm a scaredy cat. So like even when it was coming up, even though Cuba is like, that's part of the reason why I chose Cuba because it was close to the U.S. So if something happened, I could just hop on a flight back to Miami and be there back in the U.S. in an hour. But I was still scared, and it's still scary. Like, but it's also kind of amazing. Like, so whenever I would wake up after the, the first night there, I was like, I can't believe that I'm in Havana. Like, I'm in another country. Like, I would just like look out my window and I saw like the city and the the ocean, and it it's scary. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't go. You shouldn't do it. Don't let your fears hinder you from doing something that you really want to do. And with the finances, you can try to make it work. Like for me, my school would have um, paid for some of it for my scholarship. I have a scholarship, so some of it would have been paid for if I went through the semester. But I could. I ended up not been able to go for a semester, so I ended up going in the summer, which is cheaper. So if that if that is like something that's hindering you, I'd say go to the summer because the school year can be sometimes more than what you're paying for your own school. 
So I try to make it work, plan early. If you're thinking about it, just plan for it. Even if you don't end up going, still apply, still do all of that stuff because you can change your mind and just be like, oh, I won't be able to go. And that's, you'll still be considered. But if you like, oh, I want to study abroad and then don't do anything for like a year and then you're a senior and you're like, oh man, just so get, even that thought if you're a freshman or a sophomore, just at least try to act on it and try to make it happen. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, but at least, you know, you try. Absolutely. Well, thank you for the opportunity to interview you. No problem. <laughs>